Would I be the a-hole for divorcing my wife after she thought I was lying about being violated as a child? I, 27 male, and my wife, 26 female, have been married for two years and have been together for six. As context, I was repeatedly violated by my brother's babysitter when I was around nine. She would grope me, force me to remove my pants, and then either stick my member in her mouth or try and give me a hand up whenever my four-year-old brother slept. Most of the time, I was paralyzed and wouldn't slash couldn't do anything to stop it. She would always buy me sweets or video games as a reward. So in a weird way, I started growing attached to her and would try and seek the abuse, if it meant getting her rewards. I knew whatever she was doing was wrong, but she would always threaten to take my life if I ever told my parents, so I never did, while it was actively happening. Everything stopped as soon as she graduated college and moved states. I only realized how messed up the things she did to me were when I was around 14 or 15, and understood the concept of consent. When I tried to open up to my parents, strict Catholics, it never ended well. First, they blamed it on porn and claimed it corrupted my mind into imagining these things happening to me. I tried opening up to my friends, but their reactions weren't any better. My male friends just called me lucky and asked if it was good. My female friends claimed I was just lying to get attention and laughed in my face. I learned to just try and forget the past and vowed to myself that I would never mention this to anyone again. Now on to last week. Me and my wife had heard some good things about this show called Baby Reindeer on Netflix from our friends. Going into it, I knew it revolved around sexual abuse and stalking. In my mind, I thought I was over the past and I could handle watching the show no problem. Big freaking mistake. At the end of episode 4, I was literally on the verge of tears and I felt all the supposedly forgotten memories come flooding back. At the end of the next episode, I could have told it in anymore. My wife paused the show and just stared at me. After a while, I did finally manage to calm down a bit. She asked me why I was crying and I just let everything out. She said she was sorry, hugged me and we went to bed soon after. I apologized to her the following morning for ruining our night. From the moment I let her know about my past, I felt something change in our relationship. No more kisses when I came back from work and no more initiating anything intimate from her side. She wasn't mean or anything, but I felt like something was bothering her. I tried to apologize for maybe making her uncomfortable, but she would just claim there was nothing bothering her and I was just being paranoid. Yesterday, me and my wife got into a pretty heated argument about her lying about taking out the trash. But during the argument, she said something that floored me beyond belief. She literally said, At least I'm not lying about being violated, you freaking narcissist. I literally couldn't process whatever just came out of her mouth. She tried apologizing right after saying that, but I just packed a few clothes and left to stay at my friend's house. She tried calling me several times since, but I haven't bothered picking up and have blocked her for the time being. I know I might have trauma dumped on her and I know women aren't into that, but I just want some sort of acknowledgement slash support. I don't have anyone left to turn to with this and that's why I'm posting here. I've had two therapists to date and both didn't seem to help much. My gut is telling me to divorce her, but she's genuinely the love of my life. Throwing away six years because of this one moment doesn't sit right with me, but I don't know. Would I be the a-hole for divorcing her? Am I actually the a-hole here? I would love to hear some of you guys' opinions in my situation, but if you read this all the way through, thank you. Now for the top comments. Not a-hole. You did something brave by opening up, and she threw it back in your face. I'm sorry that you faced such rejection your whole life. And fortunately, that is all too common for men who have been assaulted. It's up to you to decide if you want her back, but either way is valid. Thank you. I'm pretty sure this happens a lot to women as well. I went to a few anonymous meetings and heard a lot of the same from women who claim people just thought they were trying to get a settlement or something. Not a home. As a CSA survivor, the turning point for me in my marriage was when he told me to get over it and it's been so long. We are now divorcing. While it wasn't the sole reason I left, knowing that it wasn't a safe space for me anymore, if at all, was a driving force. So while I won't tell you to leave her, I will say you do need to speak with a professional regarding your past and keep her at a distance while you work through your emotions. She can never take back what she said to you and there needs to be consequences for that. Not a hole. My mouth dropped when I read that. Completely uncalled for and utterly inappropriate. 
I'm incredibly sorry that happened to you. I hope you're able to find closure, comfort, and support you need. I am flabbergasted at how awful everyone in this person's life has been to him. Usually, the problem is people cannot open up to anyone, so they are never able to recover. In this scenario, he opened up to multiple people, and not one has given him support. Absolutely insane. Done to me by two different women in my teens, this is how it is for male victims. They are always treated this way by everyone we speak to about it. Not a hole, not at all. I am sorry that you experienced such a traumatizing event and that your parents didn't believe you and made it even harder for you. No surprise that you suppressed the memories and thoughts of it, and no surprise that it comes up occasionally with or without specific triggers. You deserve someone who support and believe you. Your wife is not doing so, and how can you open up to someone who made clear that she didn't believe you? How shall you process everything when your closest persons don't believe you? You deserve better. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my fiancé to get over her dead ex-boyfriend? My fiancé, female 33, die male 36, have been together for three years. She was with her previous boyfriend for around three years and they have two young kids together. He died from an overdose two weeks ago. He had been struggling with addiction off and on since before they were together. I've known him since childhood but wasn't close. I can say he was a very friendly, outgoing, charismatic guy when he was clean. He was the type of guy where if he was around, you'd stand no chance with the girls because they were all interested in him. Eventually, she broke up with him due to his addiction issues, but ensured that he still had relationships with his kids. Recently, that's been supervised visitations at his parents' house after he lost his job, lost his license, and failed court-mandated drug testing. I believe he made some genuine attempts to get clean. He was trying. I wanted him to succeed because I've always thought he was a good guy and his kids deserved that version of him. I became the stable day-to-day -day father figure which I willingly took on but respected that he was their dad and they loved him. Since he died, she's been a mess. Yesterday she stayed in bed all day before sitting outside at night crying for at least an hour. Today is Father's Day and she practically woke up crying. I know that she's not just sad that he's gone, but she's sad for her kids. I know it was devastating for her to have to tell her two very young children that their dad is gone. She's been moping around for two weeks, crying non-stop, calling off work. I told her she really needs to snap out of it. She told me, I love him so much. He was the love of my life. I'll never love anyone that much. I guess that was the last straw for me and I told her to get over him or I'm out. I'm not going to be second in her heart after a dead guy she hasn't even been in a relationship with for years. She told me I'm not being empathetic and I have no tact. I'm an a-hole and he was never that mean to her regardless of what was going on. Yeah, it's easy to not be an a-hole when you're strung out in heroin or stay drunk 24-7 and are the happy type of drunk. Am I the a-hole for telling her to get over him and that I won't stick around if she is still in love with him slash sees him as the love of her life slash says he won't ever love anyone like that again? I really want to know if this was an a-hole thing to say slash ultimatum to give. I know she's not just sad that he's gone, but she's sad for her kids. I know it was devastating for her to have to tell her two very young children that their dad is gone. I'll be honest with you, I was leaning heavily to her side after reading this because it's true. Kids that age can't understand, and dealing with the genuine questions from the kids would be heartbreaking. Especially after it having been only two weeks. She told me, I love him so much. He was the love of my life. I'll never love anyone that much. But then I read that. Probably an utterance without thinking about it. Probably an emotional outburst. But I'm 100% certain it's honest. That right there is the game changer. Let's recognize the truth here. You are only ever going to be a placeholder for the chance she could get back with him. If he got clean, should have dropped your butt and gone back. Find someone on her side of the family dependable enough to ensure the kids are okay and then get out. Don't ever settle for being second best in love unless it's the children you've chosen to raise as your own, be they yours or not. End a relationship clean and quickly, legally if necessary. But get out, get away and go on with your life. Not a-hole. Best of luck, my friend. I'm certain she was being honest too. She hasn't even tried to backtrack or deny it. Before she actually said it with words, I found her repeatedly kissing his picture and this bracelet he gave her. I'm sorry, that's just too much for me. 
laying in bed with his picture, kissing it over and over? Yeah, she was never over him. She just needed someone to raise her kids and support her while she figured out how to get him back. It is an insulting term called placeholder. She needs time to truly mourn, and he needs to find someone who isn't in love with someone else. I love him so much. He was the love of my life. I'll never love anyone that much. You know where you stand now if you didn't already. Not a hole, but unless you're prepared to be her eternal plan B, it's time to leave, yes? Staying knowing she settled for you must be heartbreaking. Apologize for your lack of empathy and tell her that despite this, the knowledge she settled for you is not something you can live with. It's left me wondering if she was in love with him this whole time and only with me for the sake of stability for her and her kids. This is the first time she said any of this out loud to me. I was sure she loved him at one point. Her Facebook is still filled with post after post, talking about how much she loves him and she never posted anything like that about me. Totally childish to bring up Facebook posts, I know. I just wouldn't leave a bunch of posts extolling my love for an ex-girlfriend up there after I'd broken up with them and was in a new relationship. Not that I ever made near-daily posts about my love for somebody like she did. Next story. Pregnant wife's sister offered to sleep with me. My wife, 24 female, and I, 24 male, have been together for three years and married for about six months now. We found out that we're going to be parents and we are both very excited. We both told our families over the weekend and everyone was happy for us. This morning, I got a text from my wife's sister, 21 female, saying that she knows that women can get emotionally and physically abusive and can put a stop to intimacy during pregnancy, and that she is willing to help me out anytime sexually or emotionally during and after the pregnancy. Obviously, I have no interest in anyone other than my wife. But how do I tell her what her sister offered? My wife has always been there for her sister and they have always been super close. Her sister was the maid of honor at our wedding. I don't want my wife to lose that bond and it would destroy her if she found out that her sister was willing to betray her like that. At the same time, her sister is a snake and is willing to ruin our marriage and the life of her soon-to-be nephew slash niece for what I'm guessing is a childish crush on me. My first priority is my wife and unborn child, and anyone else can go to hell. How do I approach this situation? There is literally no good outcome. I can tell my wife tonight. She will be absolutely devastated. I will always be there for her and I know her parents will be on her side, but losing a 20-year bond with her own sibling while in such a vulnerable state? Sounds terrible. How can I possibly tell my wife that the sister she loved and looked after her for so many years wanted to sleep with her husband while she was pregnant? If I don't tell her soon and tell her later, she may lose her trust in me. If I don't tell her at all, my wife will be close with someone who clearly does not care for her and could easily betray her again in the future. Now for the top comments. Sorry, dude. You have to tell your wife tonight. Otherwise, sister-in-law is going to twist it and try to make it look like this was your idea. Exactly, 100%. Key, show your wife the text. It's proof that your wife's sister was hitting on you, not the other way around. It will also show your wife that you are not hiding anything and not attempting to hide anything. I don't think you can avoid hurting your wife at all in this situation, but you can at least minimize any hurt by being open with her. And if she asks why you didn't show her sister-in-law's text as soon as you read it, tell her the truth about that too. You didn't know how to handle it and you didn't want the situation to hurt or worry her. Keep this in mind. Going forward, as a general rule, not a specific one, most of the pain inflicted by this kind of situation will be spared by partners trusting each other to be open with them about anything. Think about that. How would you feel if 5 or 10 years from now, you found out that your best friend was repeatedly making passes at your wife? And even if he wasn't doing it anymore, would that make any difference to the way you felt about her? He should explain his concerns while telling her in my opinion. It'll show how much he cares and respects her by saying, I really wish this didn't happen because I don't want you to lose your sister. But, and show her the text. I'd block the sister too, so it shows he doesn't want her contacting him due to this. This is one of those things you must show your wife immediately. The longer you wait, the worse it will make your wife feel. It's either a childish test by your wife or your sister-in-law is just evil. My cynical self was like, wife put sister up to this as a test because she's feeling scared. I freaking hate the world, man. 
But hey, maybe it's just a devious little sister trying to get back at her big sister for something that happened in middle school or something. What do I know? Honestly, I'd rather that be the case. I have not seen it. But I've heard pregnancies can heavily mess with the brain. And I'd rather have a very dumb and irrational decision was made rather than your best friend by birth being your biggest traitor. Messed up either way. Last story. Am I the a-hole for breaking up with my girlfriend because she wouldn't stop putting her feet on my new car's dashboard? I bought a new car and went out with my girlfriend for dinner. She has a habit of keeping her feet on the dashboard while sitting in front seat. This act triggered me and I told her to keep her feet down. She did not do that, which ticked me off and we had a huge fight while reaching restaurant, throughout which she did not keep her foot down at all. It was an hour journey and she persisted with her foot on dashboard all along. We had dinner. Even there, I was fighting. It was not a good time. Later, while returning, she crossed the line according to me because she again put her feet. I didn't fight this time and it again was an hour and a half journey because of traffic. She literally did not keep her feet down all the time. After dropping her home and reaching back home, I thought about it and next morning broke up with her. She is now hysterical. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It is your car, and she should respect how you want your car treated. She's also lucky she hasn't been in an accident with her legs up. I've seen a video of one, and the dude's legs are like, shattered into a million pieces. It was horrible. I was just coming here to say this. I worked in a trauma emergency room department and a surgery department, and the amount of people who experienced trauma to their legs from having their feet on the dashboard was crazy. Mostly, females were the ones who had the most trauma, and they always said that they thought they looked cute doing it. And in my mind, I'm saying, and now you have to learn how to walk again, and or have to face the reality that you lost a leg. Not to mention, who wants someone else's feet on the dashboard? Not the a-hole. Personal safety aside, what was she trying to prove? Power move? Probably thought it's cute. And yes, a power move too. Pushing the boyfriend to see how much she'll put up with it. 